hello and welcome to a look at one of the activities that takes place behind the scenes in museum collections. I'm Heather, a curator at the Dunn Museum, and today I wanted to share with you about putting accession numbers on objects in the collections. When the Dunn Museum takes in a new donation, once it's approved, it is then given an accession number that ties it back to the donor. And that accession number starts with the year that we received it and then is followed by a unique identifying number. So every object in the Dunn Museum's collection has a unique number attached to it. And that also ties into our database so we can always track all the information about the object. Robin, our exhibit designer, has a very steady hand, so she is going to be putting the numbers on our new donations. So what are you working with today? Hi Heather, today we're going to be working with this milk can. Um, we're going to be using archival materials and techniques to physically apply a number um, that can be reversed in the future and won't damage the artifact. So each object first gets this archival tag. It's made of acid-free paper with a cotton string and this just allows us to easily view information about the artifact including the accession number. Um, sometimes we like to take these off if it's, this was going to be on display for an exhibition or they can just be separated from the object during handling. So we want to make sure that the object itself is numbered with the accession number. So what's the first thing you're going to consider when deciding to put a number on this object? So first we like to look at the artifact and find a spot on here that won't be noticeable if it were on exhibit, but also not super hard to find for someone else in the future. So looking at this, we're gonna go with the bottom of the milk can. And these are the materials that you're gonna use for numbering? Uh, yes, so we have two um, clear base coats and top coats that are clear resin that we like to use just as a barrier between the artifact and the ink. Um, so there's Paraloid B72. Uh, this is good for artifacts that are made of metal, wood, ceramic, shells, things like that. And we buy the pre-mixed um, bottles. So it's B72 mixed with acetone, and then it's ready to just brush on. We also use Paraloid B67. And this is good for artifacts that are made of plastic or have painted surfaces. And this is um, premixed and dissolved with mineral spirits, which won't react with the plastic like acetone wood that is in the B72. Um, so if we have an object that we're not quite sure how these will react with it, we like to test an inconspicuous spot first and see what it does. Um, always when using these products, we want to be in a well-ventilated space and wearing gloves. So we're gonna go ahead and use the Paraloid B72 and just apply it to the bottom of this milk can. Heather, while this dries, would you like to tell me more about the history of this milk can and maybe why the museum decided to accept the donation? Sure. So this milk can um, that we're numbering is from the Hawthorne Farms Dairy in Libertyville, Illinois. It's now considered part of Vernon Hills. The dairy was first owned by Samuel Insull and then was purchased in 1937 by John Cuneo when it became known as Hawthorne Melody Farm. And that's a name that's still kind of known in the area because it became a tourist destination for a while. On the other side of the can, you can see this nameplate that says Leslie Bonner. And Bonner was a smaller dairy farmer. His farm was located in the, sort of the Lindenhurst Lake Villa area, uh, known as Bonnie Bray Farm. And smaller dairy farmers like Bonner would sell their milk to large dairy operations such as Hawthorne Farms, and that larger dairy would then handle the distribution of the milk and other dairy products. Oh, thanks, Heather. Um, so it looks like this uh, B72 is dry. So the next step would be to use this uh, white acrylic paint and apply this with a small paintbrush. And this is just so we have a more visible surface for the ink so we can see the number. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that. Um, and then we're just gonna wait for that to dry. And would you see use these same materials on every object that we get in for, as a new donation? Um, not necessarily. So these um, liquids, would probably absorb into any textile if we were to apply it to that, and that wouldn't be reversible in the future. So we like to apply the number to this cotton twill tape first, and then we like to stitch that onto the artifact, um, such as this tie. And I know for our archival objects, like photographs and paper documents, we actually use just a soft lead pencil to put the number in a discrete place. And that way it can be erased if necessary, and it won't fade over time the way some inks might. 
So looking at this milk can, the next step is going to be using these micro pens to apply the number. Um, the number for this is 2020.9. So we're going to go ahead and write that. And then once that dries, we're going to use the same Paraloid B72 and apply it as a top coat just so that the ink doesn't smear while we're handling the artifact and putting it away. So um, you mentioned that these products are reversible. So let's say we accidentally mess up a number and we put a, you know, an 8 instead of a 9. How do we go about doing that? Sure. So you're going to use a cotton swab, uh, dip it in acetone, and just rub it over the number um, if you had used B72, and that'll just dissolve away the, the ink. Um, if you're going to use the B67, you would use mineral spirits on that cotton swab. Um, you just want to work slowly and carefully. Um, and then all of these techniques that we've talked about today are outlined in the National Park Service Museum Handbook, which we like to reference if we ever have any questions. And all the materials that we're using are um, what's known as archi archival quality materials. And we get these from places like University Products and Gaylord Archival, and they specialize in museum supplies. So even though it looks like a little bottle of nail polish, it's actually specially formulated for this type of usage and won't damage our objects. If you'd like to learn more about the Dunn Museum or Lake County history in general, you can visit our website at www.lcfpd.org museum.